the group exhibit hydrogen fuel cells and batteries at the Hannover 2017. We are here at the Technical Forum and my name is Miral Burkas. I would also like to give a warm welcome to our guests watching the presentations today through our live streaming online. Please join us for the upcoming presentation, have some coffee, have some drinks, it's all for free on the house. Um, the next presentation will be regarding reform methanol fuel cells, enabling the methanol vision. I'm very much looking forward to this topic, topic and I'd like to welcome on stage CCO of SARE Energy, Mats Fries Jensen. Thank you very much. So um, I'll be talking about uh, reformed methanol fuel cells and uh, how this will enable the methanol vision. I gave a talk on that on the public podium uh, yesterday, so uh, you can catch that uh, on another place on uh, YouTube if you want to. So Serenity focus on methanol fuel cells for marine mobility and stationary applications. Our basic uh, concept is we provide the methanol fuel cell running on a methanol water mix charging batteries. And we can do that um, very, very efficiently uh, with no pollutants, no noise, and uh, in a very compact product. Uh, we come from uh, Denmark. We were founded in 2006 and uh, have been doing this for a while now. We started uh, using the uh, methanol fuel cell for smaller units, and now we have moved up to a 5 kilowatt platform. We can scale up to 30 and 50 kilowatts for multiple applications within the segment I mentioned before. It's uh, stationary, mobility and marine. Stationary is for uh, primarily telecommunications, uh, where you need uh, energy and where there are no energy. So, uh, basically replacing diesel generators in places like uh, Southeast Asia, India, Africa. For mobility, it is the range extension of vehicles. Um, we do this uh, primarily now on a demonstration basis in Denmark, amongst other places, and uh, also in, in China. For the marine segment, it's both propulsion for inland waterway ferries and canal boats, but also the big cruise liners uh, for auxiliary power ensuring that uh, cruise guests don't get a lot of diesel smoke. Methanol is uh, one of the main reasons we uh, focus on uh, uh, the energy carrier as, as liquid hydrogen. So this means we take electricity, turn it into hydrogen, bind it with CO2, and then we make liquid electricity in the form of methanol. Today, methanol is a commodity on the world market. It can be produced both very black, but also very green. And in the future, the vision is, of course, to produce it from renewable energy sources, both bio from waste, but also from liquid um, energy in form of electricity. The core technology advantage that uh, we have, as opposed to what was done some 20 years ago in the industry, is that we use a different type of fuel cell compared to the low temperature PEM. By implementing high temperature PEM with a methanol reformer, we can take away complexity in form of the gas cleanup. We also can use the waste heat from the fuel cell to supply um, the, the evaporator of the fuel cell system with heat. So this means we take away complexity and weight and cost, and we gain a high electrical efficiency. So these two main points is what makes our technology and methanol relevant again um, in the industry. So here you see a efficiency comparison chart to the old technology track uh, as opposed to our technology track. Now, in the past, the uh, methanol fuel cell concept only gave around the same efficiency as a combustion engine where we take it a, a step further, making it both economically and energy efficient. The methanol vision looks like this. 
Um, I gave a talk about it yesterday, as I said, so if you want to know more about this, you can look at that. We focus very much on methanol as a hydrogen energy carrier where that makes sense. So as we saw in the presentation before, if you have the room uh, for a large hydrogen uh, storage, that's good. But sometimes you need to have a better energy density uh, carrier of hydrogen, which is then methanol. This is the, um, the core engine that we do. On the one side, you see the uh, fuel cell. On the other side, you see the reformer. So the way we do methanol reforming, uh, methanol reformers are actually very simple. Simple and cheap. This is the core product, a 5 kilowatt unit with a 40 to 50% net electrical efficiency, um, weight, and uh, also integrated DC-DC uh, uh, charging. For mobility applications, we focus on places where there's a long run time. So this would be uh, inner city usage like buses. We focus where there's a low average power consumption. So that means, again, cities, not highway driving. And then the last thing is heavy loads. The lighter the load, the more likely you'll be able to manage the job with a, a battery system alone. So that's, that's our focus for mobility applications. A methanol fuel cell vehicle is basically a hybrid vehicle with a small battery pack and a methanol range extender matching the average power consumption of the vehicle. So this gives you a fast refueling, a long uh, duration of the fuel cell, means a long range, no particle emission. And uh, when you get the methanol from a green source, you get a low well-to-wheel CO2 emission. So this is a typical urban cycle where you have both acceleration and deacceleration over an entire day. So this means at a city vehicle, you actually need a very low kilowatt amount of energy production for your vehicle. For the emissions, we do a significant saving on emissions per driven kilometer compared to a combustion engine vehicle. We don't move them completely because the hydrogen is bound in the CO2. So this means we do have CO2 tailpipe emission significantly reduced because of the increased efficiency of the fuel cell. When you look at the CO2 well-to-wheel emissions, which is what makes sense when we look at CO2, you can compare it both to the current status, which is um, the current status, uh, this is an investigation from Denmark, where we have the current status of uh, non-renewable energy sources, and you have the green scenario where you look at renewable energy sources. And in both situations, the well-to-wheel CO2 emissions are lowest on methanol. So this means both today and in the future, this, the well-to-wheel CO2 emissions will be favorable in a methanol scenario. So. CO2 emissions and decarbonization is important for the world. For the end user, economics is very important. So this is the uh, Danish example of uh, fuel economics. So you have the diesel and gasoline with taxes. That's the thing about Denmark. We tax everything very high. Um, so you have a pump price. This is in Danish crowns, which gives you a 0 0.36 euro uh, cost per driven kilometer. If you compare that to black methanol today, you have uh, almost a 30% reduction in fuel cost. So that's today comparing black to black. If you take green as of today and compare that, you have a roughly 20% reduction. So this means if you have a high budget for uh, fuel consumption, you can save significant amounts of money. And I'll have to stress that this is today's prices. Um, methanol price has doubled since before Christmas. So. Um, Today, it looks reasonably good, 30%. Before Christmas, it was more than 50%. So that's the fluctuations sometimes. This was a vehicle we put on the streets in Denmark, has been driving for a few years now. Um, we gave it to a food delivery company in Denmark. So they use it in an inner urban uh, environment. They drive all day, and they like to keep the pizzas and the driver warm all day. So the waste heat from the fuel cell heats the car. So this was a great scenario where the only other alternative is a combustion engine vehicle. Battery vehicles do not have the range or the ability to keep the, the vehicle heated all day. 
We did the same thing with the uh, Nissan ENV 200 hybrid. You can see it over here, right next to the, to the speaker. So if you want to know more about that, you can come over to me and we'll have a talk about it. We also built a methanol refueling station and, um, and uh, demonstrated to the world that making a methanol infrastructure is actually very simple and very cheap. And uh, the lastly, uh, one of the last points is methanol is already being widely used in the transportation sector. In uh, China, roughly 7% of all transportation fuels is methanol. So the question is not, is methanol ever going to be big? It's already bigger than most other things. The question is, will we use it with fuel cells? And uh, also, will we ever get it from green sources? And this is a map of the um, methods for green production uh, already existing. And this is, of course, what we use to fuel our vehicles. And now I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. So are there any questions? If not, I really like the idea with Just Eat, uh, yeah. <laughs> the food delivery. Um, I, I've read some articles and some people, I think some people don't like methanol fuel cells so much for some kind of reason. Um, I think it's a great idea, especially I think it's a great approach in the right direction because as you, as you told us, a lot of stuff is already in place to just use it. Uh, why would you say that a lot of people are also kind of not so happy with methanol fuel cells? Well, I think people are very happy with the methanol fuel cells. Some 20 years ago, when the, some of the major manufacturers of uh, vehicles that we are starting to see on the street now, they started their basic research, they focused on methanol. So many of the big ones, they tested methanol, but they had the wrong technology. They basically had an inefficient technology that was very complex. And those are the two things we have changed. So. Great, great yeah. job. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you very much uh, for this presentation. Uh, if you want to have a chat or have a look at the car, just it's right on the left side, uh, booth 40. Uh, please have a look, have a visit. Uh, I've, saw, I've seen some people taking pictures. Of course, you can do that. Otherwise, also the presentations will be available afterwards online to watch it again, as he already mentioned about the presentation uh, at the public forum. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next presentation will start in about five minutes regarding the topic um, upscale and commercialization of the technology. I am very much looking forward to this one and see you in a few minutes. Stay with us, uh, have a coffee, have a drink and see you later. Thank you. <laughs>